Hi everybody, welcome to a special edition of the Digital Loop. Today we have a special guest, we have Alex Barrera in London together with Paul. We are having, we are experiencing some technical problems, so uh, Paul is going to join us in a little bit. But Alex is here, how are you Alex? Welcome to the Digital Loop. Hello Ivan, thank you for inviting me, very excited about this episode. Our pleasure, our pleasure. Uh, today is a special issue because Alex is the first uh, special guest joining our show. And uh, he's going to talk today about a subject called organizational storytelling. So for all the people out there that they don't know what, it's, uh, what does it mean, organizational storytelling, can you give us a brief definition of what it is? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I, I guess everyone knows what storytelling is, uh, but most people have in mind something like Snow White, Cinderella, uh, while storytelling is essentially a way of communicating between humans. It's a natural way of communicating and remembering things between humans. And organizational storytelling is just the use of these techniques on purpose to communicate better and fix issues within a large organization. So things ranging from change management to leadership to inspiration to things like uh, change of corporate values and how do you they communicate this internally in a, in a big corporation imagine 3,000 people corporation and how do you uh, kind of communicate and reach everyone in an easy way instead of sending an ugly boring memo that everyone will just like archive on their inbox awesome awesome uh, I see that Paul is here how are you Paul I'm good, thank you. I'm outside actually. Hope you're all good. Keep on going. I'll just join whenever if I have something interesting to chip in. Just keep keep going, guys. All right. Um, during the, the the previous to this conversation, uh, we got the opportunity to talk a little bit about some examples of uh, the impact of storytelling within the organization. Uh, and uh, you mentioned the the Ritz Carlton Hotel. Can you give us a little bit about this of how storytelling is impacting uh, their organization as a whole? Yeah, this was a, a interesting case. Um, you know, I believe many companies are starting to really think hard about this notion of corporate culture, and uh, something that ten years ago was a—I mean, no one was talking about this, and everyone thought that was inexistent. Well, it seems it's real for many companies, and it can really impact your your bottom line as a company. Awesome. Yeah. So the rate. Carlton did this uh, case where they basically what they do is they join everyone. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you are there rather. You are a little bit freezy, but it's okay. Cut it down. Okay. Okay. So w one of the things they did is um, they brought everyone in each hotel of the change all over the world, and so they have what they call the weekly media meetup. And during that meetup, what they asked their employees is to tell to tell stories that had happened to them during that week, like things uh, between them and customers, things with providers and stuff like that. So every week, each hotel uh, selects the best story that happened that week there, and they share it with all the other hotels. And so after after everyone has shared their stories, they pick up like the one, the, the first one or the second one most powerful stories, and they share it with everyone. And Essentially, it's a way of telling people that it's about employees, that uh, things work because of employees, and that these are our values, and this is how we live them anywhere in the world. And they basically feature stories like uh, employees ranging to uh, calling their families in other countries to buy stuff for customers in their hotel and shipping them back to the hotel just to please a customer because they needed that thing that was only bought in another country. <laughs> so it's beautiful, beautiful showcases of how employees go to great lengths to uh, to kind of deal with their customers and make them happy. And I think that's a really, really powerful uh, value in a corporate culture. So, so basically, it's a, an emulation process where other <laughs> employees can learn about how the other employees are treating their customers. So basically, it's a this is change from the bottom, right? Exactly. Exactly. Well. In the end, that's what stories are. Uh, most of the times, when you listen to your friends, when you go to have some coffee, and a friend of yours tells you a story of going to the gym, I lost 10, 10 pounds or whatever it is, and you will go like, "Oh, really? How do you do that?" You know, and suddenly change starts happening. 
because of the story, not because someone sent you a memo and told you, you know, if you train this many hours, you will lose weight, but because a friend of yours that you trust, that you believe he's a sane person, is telling you, hey, I did this and it was unbelievable, it actually works. So you trust the stories much more than a, a, a septic email or a septic communication. Yeah, and I think that the, the, the really valuable thing is, uh, it's not, you know, uh, the boss telling the, the, the employees, you know, or following a guidelines, but it actually comes from the employees. So it's actually something that involves everybody in the organization, not just, like, like Paul said, top down, but bottom up. I think that's a really good example. So now, no, so now Alex, maybe the yeah, question I mean, is, in, so, sorry, but Alex, maybe the, the other question is, besides that, is how can you, make that change implemented in, in all companies. Uh, how can a, a traditional company get into this? Because a lot of people talk about the example of Zappos, for instance, where they have this kind of customer service culture, but this was because the company itself was started with that customer culture in mind. But more traditional companies may have not. How do you implement that, that change? That's a very good question. Uh, I get that. Uh, I get that question a lot, but specifically, the most people struggle with what they say is finding st stories. You know, everyone talks about storytelling, and everyone has heard like stories about specific customers within a brand. But how do you internally find the stories? And uh, so, I recently wrote an article about the role of what community management should be. You know, most companies have community managers nowadays. Uh, even the big ones, uh, you know, they still they open up social media channels and they put these guys there in charge that essentially what they do is they move information from one account to the other one. But, but the real role of these people is actually what I, what I normally call uh, story hunters. They should be going around the corporation, the organization, looking for powerful and, and amazing stories. And the fact that storytelling requires some kind of culture, cultural change, so at first you need someone that knows about this to locate the stories and to basically train people within the company to identify the stories. And I'll give you an example. This so you talk with a startup and they have a nice project. You talk with them and they go, yeah, well, we don't have stories. And then you go and have a coffee with them or a coffee with the CEO. And it, it definitely happens with big companies too. You go and talk with the uh, director of innovation. Sorry. You're, you're, chat you're chatting with them. And suddenly they start telling you this amazing story. And you go like, hey, dude, you guys have an incredible story here that involves a 100-people team thing. And they go like, oh, really? Do you think this is a story? And it's like, yeah, this is an unbelievable story. You should tell this internally. So what really happens is that storytelling is so human, it's so innate for us that we don't realize that, that we are dealing with interesting stories. So there needs to be at first a figure, uh, some kind of role of someone which is like the story hunter, someone that locates the stories, that talks with all the departments, locates these interesting stories and uh, basically tell people, hey, this is interesting, keep them coming. If you find another thing like this, let us know because this is a really powerful story. And with time, what happens is what happens at Sappos, where everyone is involved in the whole storytelling role, and everyone locates stories everywhere they go. So it's not just one role, but everyone in the company doing this. Awesome. Do you have any other question, Paul? Oh. I believe Paul froze. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> awesome. Um, I, I have a question. You know, from the point of view of uh, you mentioned that this is this is this is at all levels of organizations. We're talking about the small organizations. We're talking about startups. We're talking about huge organizations. How? Uh, what are the what are the things that you know uh, uh, any any leader in any organization can start doing in order to start uh, um, bringing these stories and, and and bringing the power of storytelling to the organizations? What are the like I said the first three things that a company leader needs to do in order to start bringing this up? Well, I would say that uh, turn into what we call, uh, the, or what I call the ethnological uh, chief officer. Okay, so basically storytelling is what ethnology is about, which is a, a branch of anthropology. And Essentially, one of the first things is organizations where the leader just like goes on 
leadering the company without s spending a single minute listening to their down. Go to the uh, cafeteria or to the pub or wherever you and relaxes. Just sit down and listen to people. And watch something interesting, just chip in with them. Storytelling is about understanding uh well, I guess Alex just froze for a second. <laughs> yeah, well that's that's the, we're we're trying to do something here that's always a bit difficult when you don't have uh so basically, I mean, what he was saying about the storytelling was interesting. What I like about it, especially, is that a lot of uh, uh, I talk with a lot of young entrepreneurs, and often it's what is what Alex said is that they don't realize they have a story. I mean, not, especially when people are pitching, whether it's internal pitching in an organization or pitching to get, uh, for instance, uh, um, investors. What happens is that people do not realize. I mean, they try to say something because they've heard other people say. Whether if they actually tell their own story, or they actually tell what they actually experienced, and you don't have even to use the term story, then they realize. Then I mean, the impact is much greater. We all like story. We all, as humans, we like to understand concepts through, through stories. This, this is valid for presentations. This is valid for pitching. This is valid for business cases as well. And I think this is what's the angle of uh, that Alex is pushing. That's very interesting. And I think uh, bigger organizations need that. To actually change, I mean, the only thing that's a, 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 a bit tough, of course, is a change of pace in the in the cultural change in uh, in in the company itself. I mean, to change, I mean, it's interesting that Alex mentioned story hunters, but these story hunters, you still need to buy in from the top. You still need to have someone at the top, some visionary at the top, say, okay, you know, we're gonna go deep down into the DNA of the company and find those guys who actually will find the stories for you. I think Alex is back, by the way, right? Yeah, here. Yeah. No, no, you can keep going. That was awesome. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you go. No, because I mean, uh, you were out. So I was just mentioning how uh, our stories is something that's ingrained in our DNA. But uh, more often than not, if you say to someone that he's telling a story, then people block a little bit because they're like, oh, if I say a story, it's like being in the front of a blank page of a book, and I've got to write something. Whereas if they usually would they just say what is the experience about something. Where in, in that case, for instance, you. The case you were mentioning it's customer service. Usually, it's that's the story. It's just that the, 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 there needs to be someone, and you, you call the story hunter, but it needs to be someone who actually pushes people, helps them, I mean, takes their hands and actually make them comfortable about telling their own uh, experience, which translates into a story. Yeah, this is interesting because one of the things I've seen is the best way to get a story is just to sit down in front of someone and shut up. Yeah. And Listen, this is yeah. something that happens. You, you guys have been in, in Asia. You know how Asians are in, in that sense that they normally do not talk. For, for quite some time, they just sit down and listen. And this actually prompts the other person to fill in the void, especially for Westerners to fill in the void with something. So that's the moment where people start narrating stuff, start uh, uh, kind of uh, dumping stories at the other side. So it's as easy as sitting down and listening, saying, OK, you tell me. And as you say, this is very human. And the problem with storytelling is, I believe, there's a lot of like bad connotation in terms of, specifically in the organization, when someone talks about telling a story, it looks like you're gonna go on and tell some kind of tale. You know, you're gonna tell Snow White, and you're gonna go into the board meeting, and you're gonna say like, okay, once upon a time there was a company that was doing this product, and we fucked it up, and now the evil witch is dominating the market. Uh, which, by the way, that would be a fantastic start for a board meeting. But <laughs> uh, most people still believe that storytelling is in the in the field of of uh, let's say teenagers and, and younger people, and they don't realize that what they do every day when they talk with their departments, when they talk with their teams, is essentially storytelling. Yeah. So now can can you translate that into also external storytelling? I mean, do you think that having these type of internal stories that actually reshape the culture of a company can then translate into out, uh, outside storytelling? Meaning, because a lot of storytelling we hear these days is obviously about marketing, you know, because a lot of people want to reshape content to stand out, so they do storytelling. So, do you think that companies are good at storytelling inside, or also good at storytelling outside? Oh, mo most definitely. I believe that if you're good at storytelling inside, you don't need to do storytelling outside. Their own internal stories basically permeate the company, and it's their own. Co 
their own employees that tell their friends about, oh my God, you have no idea what happened to us yesterday in the company. You know, we were having beers, and this is what someone, this idea that someone had was just implemented 24 hours later, and now we have a fantastic product that just made the top page of the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or whatever. Yeah. I guess we're also talking about differentiation. A big problem that many organizations sure. have is that we were talking just about products. And every has, many companies have the same product, but each company has its own story. So I think that it's very valuable that you say that people inside the organization, they need to drive this to the outside. Because at the end of the day, the difference between company A and company B, it's actually the story. The product may be similar, the features may be you know, kind of the same, but what makes the difference is the story. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's a very good point. Uh, yesterday, I, I was on a meeting with a company, and they have a kind of pretty interesting product. And the first story they told me was very product-driven story. You know, we have a product, and you can connect to this product, and you can do this, and you can do that. And uh, after they relax, and we are having some pins, the guy starts telling me that this, the the reason why he started this company was because he's Iranian. And uh, during the uh, Green Revolution, they wanted to create some kind of communication back channel for, for the people on the ground to be able to communicate and, and, and kind of forward what was going on and save lives. And so that was impressive. And I told the guy, like, why don't you tell the story? So the product was actually the same product. But he told me two stories. One of them was full of emotion, full of, like, uh, I, told, I told him this, technology is not... Uh, something that should enslave us, it should serve human beings. It should be something that allow us to empower the human beings to do stuff, not the other way around. So the first story with the same product was about fully blown technology. The second story was about human nature, about helping humans through the technology. And it's the same product, the two stories make a huge difference and a huge impact in how people perceive the product. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, we we have to start wrapping up uh, this show. We are really, really happy that you had the opportunity to join us. Uh, and uh, for all the people watching this show, please tell us where uh, they can find you, where they can know more about about you and about what you're doing. Well, you have my uh, website, www.press42.com. Uh, mostly the older storytelling is being published in the blog, so blog.press42.com. And of course, my Twitter, which is a Barrera on Twitter, and I believe that's all. My email, Alex at press42.com, and I'll be glad to talk with anyone that's as passionate as I am on storytelling and helping organizations uh, tell the right story and the powerful and emotional thing. Awesome, awesome. Well, Paul, anything you want to add? No, I mean, uh, the, what I really like about Alex's story is that usually uh, organizational storytelling up to very recently was usually catered to leadership control, so basically for the leaders of a company. And what he does is actually also try to ingrain this kind of culture into like everyone in the company. So there's a true cultural change, not only for management, but so a true cultural change. We'll have all the links that he mentioned about his uh, blogs and a few reference in uh, the post that I'll put up uh, later this afternoon. And I, I hope, I mean, it was a bit technically challenging to do this because we were both, Alex and me, were out, so the Wi-Fi is still not that great in London, but we'll, we'll do better next time where we invite a guest. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you so much, guys, for the invite, and I hope we repeat in the future. We will, definitely. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.